There's no two ways about it. A good workbench has got a solid base and there's more out there than just the mighty mortise and tenon. No matter your skill set or even your tool set, one of these is going to be a good option for you. At the end of the day, you could just bolt two pieces of wood together. It doesn't get any faster or easier than that, and you can get a pretty solid bench. I just built this one, and it doesn't even have joinery. No joinery means relying on the fasteners. Lag screw will work, but I went with these GRK structural screws. And again, no joinery means you really need to show up with some decent hardware. But if you're ready to step it up a notch, then adding in some joinery can really start to elevate the quality of your bench. Joinery is when you're cutting pieces of wood so they interlock and fit together. And that isn't just to add to the craftsmanship level of your bench, but it takes the pressure off of bolts and screws and stuff like that and it can add to the longevity of your bench. If I'm cutting joints, I take a few minutes to do a little bit of stock prep because nothing is more frustrating than trying to cut joinery on those rounded edges that come on construction lumber. I'm cutting a half lap and I knifed one side, but I'm only using the pencil here on the other side. Very important, so let's hold that thought. Gonna need a depth to cut to and the marking gauge is handy here because then you can take the exact same setting for the rail piece to make a nice match. And I count with my fingers, so fraction decimals, it's, it, the marking gauge is easier. I'm putting the knife line inside that pencil line. That's going to make sure it ends up with a nice and tight fit. Then just saw a few more kerfs to get the waist ready to bust out. And I know you can't see my eyes in this shot, but I'm smacking these things with the chisel. They're bouncing around like ping pong balls, and I can guarantee you this. I am doing a fully OSHA approved safety squint. After successfully dodging all those flying projectiles and getting closer down to that depth line, I pare it down with the chisel and this sound is music to my ears. This big notch is basically a big dado that is half of the joint. If your chiseling's not really all there yet, you gotta go grab one of these babies. Router plane. For the other half of the joint, I need to saw down the cheek of the rail that's gonna fit into the notch. For anyone new here, I'm setting up shop here in the corner of the garage and only using a core set of basic tools for everything. So heck yeah, I'm using a big handsaw to cut this tenon cheek. The notch was cut slightly undersized so that we can trim the rail down to the perfect fit. like a glove. If you can hold it up in the air like this, then you know you got it right. It's kind of tempting to want to only cut the notch and drop the rail right into it, but the shoulder on that tenon section is actually part of the joint too, and any time the joint is stressed, that shoulder is going to work along with the notch to keep everything stable. This is a big step up from just bolted together. It's a half lap or a cross lap joint. Mix in a little glue and some nails or screws and you've got a seriously good workbench joint. Honestly, I rarely ever use half laps because with hardly any extra effort, you can get a mega payoff and totally kick this thing into overdrive. We're starting this one off almost the exact same way as with the half lap. And, you know, sure, it's cool to have a big tenon saw, but honestly, with just a dovetail saw for the fine stuff and a hand saw, I think 99.9% .9 of people will be totally set. I saw close to that line and then take it right down to the marking gauge line with a chisel. And here's where we modify the half lap into a dovetailed half lap. Only putting the dovetailed angle on one side is going to give us the mechanical advantage, but still make it easy to get this to a really tight fit. Woodworking is a bit like cooking in the kitchen. You got to clean the scraps as you go. I line this up right to that knife line and then cover it up. This is going to undersize the notch by just a smidge. I broke off the corner here so I didn't pencil it all the way, I just used a straight edge to get to a cut line. From here it's just like with the previous joint. Saw some kerfs, dodge some bullets, and make some music. The same trick is going to work here plane down the top edge to a perfect fit. This dovetailed lap joint has all the advantage of the previous one, but there is no way this sucker can slide out like the cross lap. I don't care how hard you pull it. It's only coming out the way it went in, so it's good to lock it in with some nails or screws, 
With these big old cut nails, you usually need to drill a pilot hole, but with this thing in such a tight joint, there's really nowhere for the rail to expand in order for a split to happen, so just smacking a nail in there is only going to make this joint even tighter. By itself, a great joint. Combine it with several more going around a workbench base, and this is not going anywhere. I feel so fortunate and blessed to be able to make money doing something that I love. And I'm sure a lot of people would like to earn a paycheck from something that they're passionate about. I know most of you guys have heard of Skillshare as a great platform for online courses from anything from woodworking to cooking to video editing and everything in between. Skillshare also has everything you need to take something that you love and turn it into a side hustle. Like that could be rocking your first Etsy shop, building a subscriber base on social media, or boosting your productivity with AI tools. They have these awesome learning paths, which are a sequence of courses to help you master a specific goal or skill. One that I'm really interested in is building an Etsy shop that sells because anybody can start an Etsy shop, but standing out in the crowd and actually making sales is the hard part. And that's where Skillshare can really help members to explore all the ins and outs of marketing, positioning, and getting discovered in an online marketplace like that. As I was checking this out, something jumped up at me because it was literally one of my wife's New Year's goal. And that is a course on how to successfully self-publish a picture book. There is a lot of really cool career and side hustle related stuff on Skillshare. New Year's is coming up and I know I'm not the only one with ambitious goals for 2024. So check it out and the first 500 people to use my link are going to get a one month free trial to Skillshare. And thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. But this really wouldn't be a workbench joinery video without talking about the mortise and tenon. This bench had huge mortises, so instead of chopping them out, just cut a notch into a board and got a little creative with the glue up. Matching tenons were built into the glue up too. Then I could use the same fitting technique by undersizing the mortises and planing down the tenons to fit. But just a nice fitting mortise and tenon wasn't going to be enough to bring it to total overkill mode. For that, I needed to draw bore it, which basically means I drilled a few holes into each mortise all the way through to the other side of the mortise, put the tenons into place, and marked the center of the hole. Then I moved that mark closer to the shoulder line of the tenon, not by much, maybe just a sixteenth of an inch, before drilling through the mark. It makes an offset hole so that when I hammered in the pegs, it pulls the joint super tight together. Because the hole in the tenon is offset from the hole in the mortise, helps to taper the dowels, I just used a fat pencil sharpener to speed it along. I'm going to open myself up to the throwing of apples here and say that I don't know that it's really all that necessary if you've got a great joint to begin with, but it does pull the joints really tight together and it's kind of fun to do. Hope the video was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.